Shove it, man! <laughs> Alright, the squad. Now, you might think today's Ring of the Hawk episode is pretty random. And to the untrained ass, it sure is. But this run means something to me. Because it's a lady that I had really high hopes for during the 2010s. She was one of the top indie women for a very long time. She had an exceptional look and her moveset was good at the time. Why was she not getting a big break? I just couldn't understand it. So when I learned that it was finally happening for her, I was excited. People would finally get to see what I saw in her. Or so I thought. This is a good example of not taking an opportunity when it's handed to you. Today's video is also a Patreon request by Tony the Calzone Kid. If you want to make the Hawk talk, sign up today. Alright, it's Santana Garrett. Will it make me say damn it? I sort of lied earlier because she did get a shot on a bigger stage appearing for TNA several times. And each time it led to nothing. Most notably, she played a psychopath character called Brittany and was the girlfriend of fellow psychopath Samuel Shaw. She was gone almost straight away. I just couldn't understand it. I couldn't comprehend it. Why wasn't she a star? She was certainly better than some of the knockouts that TNA was booking at the time. Well, eventually all her hard work did pay off and she began making appearances on NXT from 2016 onwards. Match 1. Charlotte Flair. Wow, she looks so different. But we're not here to talk about her. She's with Bailey, and she takes on Santana Garrett, who has dropped her psychopath gimmick from TNA. Well, here's a punch to the gut. This is 2013, so this is before her TNA run. It's Santana with the first takedown by the arm. Charlotte returns the favour. They do some chain wrestling for a bit. They keep smiling at each other the whole time. Garrett sends Charlotte into the corner and lands a snap mirror into a toe punt. Garrett smiles again and does a Russian leg sweep. Santana Garrett's submission is eventually turned into a two count pin. Suddenly, Charlotte does the splits into a takedown bridging pin for a two. Charlotte gets distracted by other girls on the outside and she almost pays for it for a roll up. Flair just doesn't care and picks Garrett up and drops her on her face. Suddenly, Charlotte hits a horrible looking move and that's the three. Literally nothing impressive here from Garrett, but she was just here to do the J.O.B. so I can't be too judgmental. But the match was a little bit ugly. It's a D, no reason to want to see her again, but she might improve. Match 2, two and a half years later, so this will be after her TNA run now. Oscar takes on Santana Garrett, who doesn't get an entrance. Oscar keeps no selling her punches and smiling at her. Oscar suddenly flips and hits a running ass strike. She keeps throwing kicks. Santana does manage to duck one, but gets smacked instead. Santana manages another duck from a running kick and almost gets the roll up. She also gets a two off a Russian leg sweep. Garrett tries to hit another running strike, but it's turned into an armbar. Oscar is relentless and turns it into the Oscar lock for the tap out. This is not a good start, it's an Stop S. It, Match 3, Emma the Alsatian with Dana Brooke versus Santana Garrett, who I'm surprised is getting an entrance now. She still looks like a million bucks, so that's a good start. But the dubstep music is a terrible start. The crowd all know her and they chant for her. Emma stops any initial happiness she might have found her by slamming her head into the corners time and time again. She hits a nice butterfly suplex. The crowd are desperately chanting for Santana, who's managed literally nothing. Emma does a snap mirror into a kick. She tries to punch her way into a comeback, but Emma drop kicks her away, almost straight away. Now Emma aggressively stretches Santana across the ropes. It's moved into a submission, which lasts a while. Santana eventually escapes and throws one punch before being closed down straight away. Finally, in the corner, Santana lands a clothesline and hits a Russian leg sweep. Garrett then does a handspring back elbow. She wants to hit a dive, but she can't manage it, and Emma gets her in the tree of woe. Emma kicks her time and time again, with Dana Brooke also cheating from the outside. Garrett manages a double leg into a jackknife cover for a two. Emma isn't phased and stomps her head into the mat. She puts on the Alsatian lock and Santana Garrett taps out. Ugh, that was not much of anything. She did sell the beating well, so it had that going for it. It's a D. Match 4, Billy Kay who makes the boys spray versus Santana Garrett. Billy starts with a fireman's carry. Santana manages to dodge her next move and hits a drop kick. She does a float over in the corner but is smacked down. Nice suplex from Billy Kay now for a two count. Garrett slowly makes a comeback and hits her hands brim back elbow into the corner. She misses the follow up kick and gets smacked in the back of the head. The big boot from Big Billy K ends it. These matches all suck Sonny Siaki's ass so far. It's just a bit depressing, it isn't it? Match 5, May Young Classic 2017. First round match. Piper Niven. Oh no, not her. Well, chances are we'll get a passable match at some point from her. It's possibly just bad luck that every time she turns up on the Shove It show, it's a bad match from Piper Niven. Garrett is the opponent who now has new dubstep music, which still sounds horrible. It's weird because during her entrance, she looks like the full package. 
We start with a handshake, which suddenly turns into an unfriendly shake. Niven tries to scare Santana in the corner. Piper Niven is the first to score a knockdown. JR on commentary points out that Santana has been having training with Scott Hall and Larry Zabisco. Now I'd like to make a point about that. All those videos on the last call with Scott Hall channel have long since been deleted, but I remember at the time she was always hanging out with them. What was her relationship with them because she looked like she was living with them or something? Maybe she likes bad guys. Santana is trying a submission but she almost regrets it when she's powered up. Santana slips out of it and dodges an ass drop and hits a kick for a two. Piper Niven starts trying to intimidate her again, but Santana does some athletics and catches Piper with her feet and she goes around and around in a circle. Piper isn't hurt from that and hits the big crossbody for a two. Garrett's really struggling to land a move now. Piper keeps on working a cravat. She gives up on that and then nails a clothesline for a two. Garrett manages a block in the corner and kicks Piper from the apron. She comes through the ropes and hits a DDT for a two. Santana Garrett desperately punches and drop kicks Piper. Garrett does an eat defeat, which leaves Gail Kim dumping in a nappy of anger. The springboard back elbow connects, but Piper throws her bulldog attempt away. Niven hits her with a running splash, but surprisingly it's a two. That's like a small tractor falling on you. Piper signals that she's going to the top. Santana wakes up and tries to Trish Stratus her off the top rope, which she manages. That's yet another two. The crowd are enjoying this one. Garrett straight up boots her in the head and goes running. Unfortunately, her shining star press misses and Piper crashes down on her. Piper finishes her off with the Mission Clue driver. Finally, a watchable match. The crowd liked it and so did I. Very fun, it's a B. Piper's run of bad matches on the Shove It show is finally over. Now there was another Mae Young Classic match on a special show, but I couldn't find it no matter how hard I tried. It was a six women's tag also featuring Tessa Blanchard. So it's a shame we couldn't find that one. Well, pass the clip you're seeing now. Interestingly, five out of six of the women in this match had history of TNA. Moving on. Match 6, Battle Royal. She doesn't even get an entrance. Santana is left teetering on the edge by Aaliyah for ages. You know it's going bad when Aaliyah is destroying you. She does manage to outlast Rhea Ripley, so she's got that going for her. We go to an advert break, but surprisingly, Santana is still in the match when we return. The field is starting to narrow. The commentary team say that Santana Garrett has eliminated somebody. Now I've replayed it a few times, I don't think she eliminated anyone and it was instead just a commentary botch, nothing to get excited about. Nikki Cross starts going mental and eliminating everybody. Santana is unfortunately one of those women who's eliminated and she's sent out by a clothesline. Only one fake elimination for Santana, it's Kiss an S. Me, bitch. Another 8 months pass between that match and the next match, so that probably tells you how it was going. Match 7, Dakota Kai vs Santana Garrett. She still looks great, but I'm starting to think she can't bring anything else to the table. Nice technical exchange to begin with, I think Santana just about shades it. She hits a shoulder tackle now, but Kai starts out speeding her and smashes her with a dropkick. Garrett manages to slow her down with a couple of arm drags. She also hits a Russian leg sweep. Santana starts showing a bit more of a nasty side here, it's good to see. Suddenly, Garrett rolls into a chancery submission. I was relieved to see something new. Kai makes the ropes though. They both avoid each other's kicks. Dakota blocks the eat defeat and hits an enziguri. Kai just throws kick after kick after kick. She hits a couple of big time face washes in the corner but Santana is still getting up. The scorpion kick is the setup for a code red into knees. Beautiful finisher I have to say. Garrett didn't really do anything here but the match itself was a good one. It's a D. Unfortunately another 5 months pass by now. Match 8, Tay Conte vs Santana Garrett. This is weird, they're calling it her NXT debut. Not sure why, are we supposed to forget she's had 7 matches already? Tay takes her down straight away of a rolling armbar. Santana escapes, but once again, Tay sweeps her legs out. Conte decides it's a good idea to sit on her face whilst working an armbar. Santana does a nice reverse onto her leg scissors for a second, and then hits some arm drags and a Russian leg sweep. Yet again, she's shut down, this time with an overhead suplex and a big running knee to the noggin. Tay viciously throws kicks, with Santana desperately clinging to the rope. Just a two from that flurry of offense. Garrett can't manage a comeback as Conte starts doing rolling arm bars. Tay puts her in the rings of Saturn 2, but it's still not over. Santana manages to create some space for Jawbreaker. The handspring back elbow connects. She then does some awkward acrobatics which seem off as they both smack each other. Somehow that's a two for Garrett. Garrett can't connect with her shining star press and Conte beats her with a simple kick. See, this is the problem. Everybody else's offense looks so much more interesting and devastating. If Garrett has anything else in the tank, she needs to show it now, goddammit, or she's going in the shove-it zone. It's a D. Match 9, Io Shirari versus Santana Garrett. 
Just like all the other matches, it's Soraya with all the flashy moves. Despite that, Garrett reverses an arm drag into a pin for a two. Garrett suddenly grabs her arm and runs off the ropes with an arm drag, which really didn't look that great. The next moves are better with a head scissors from the floor, which Io Kart wheels out of. Santana boots her head off. She can't do anything else and Shiro hits a flapjack. Garrett now manages a block in the corner and hits a Russian leg sweep. Just like the last match, she does that forward roll into the delayed punch. She also connects with a handspring back elbow, quickly followed by a snap suplex for a two. Garrett puts her in a last chancery, but the chancery doesn't last. Io drop toe holds her against the ropes. She hits double knees in the corner and a moonsault for the three. While Santana controlled the majority of this match, which was surprising, I think she got a bit more of a chance to show what she's actually capable of here. It wasn't bad, it's a C. Match 10, Battle Royal. As usual, Garrett doesn't receive an entrance. She's completely worthless, nothing is happening. Garrett is kicked out and eliminated by Shayna Baszler. She may as well not even exist, Just shove it. Match 11, Bianca Belair versus Santana Garrett, who's now getting zero reaction. Belair rugby tackles her the second the bell rings. Bianca pretty much does Santana's move now, but she can actually hit it nicely. Belair makes short work of her here when she drops Garrett on her face in the corner and then she gets the win in literally 20 seconds. It's an S. Match 12, Liv Morgan versus Santana Garrett, who strangely has a new gimmick. I guess she's joined the circus. Well, this is one circus that no one would ever pay to see. Liv does a nice arm drag, which makes everybody look confused. Santana tries to do something in the corner, but his head says it away. Liv spanks herself with happiness. Liv Morgan now matrixes away from a punch and almost rolls up Garrett. Santana manages to elbow Liv in the face and hit the handspring elbow in the corner. You'd think that could be the start of something, but no. Straight away, Liv drop toe holds her in the ropes and drop kicks her. That's a two. Liv climbs on top of Santana Garrett for a straight jacket, which is stopped when Garrett shunts her into the corner. She tries to create space, but Morgan runs her over Hurricanrana. Garrett does some slow motion rolling into a punch. This makes her grit her teeth with anger. Garrett hits the snap suplex and tries her chance for submission, which doesn't last long. They now have a standing smack off, which Liv wins. Garrett is able to slip out of a sunset flip attempt, but can't avoid the enziguri, and Liv wins with a flatliner. Once again, completely overshadowed. I'm not even sure Garrett looks like a star anymore, or maybe that's just because Liv is just bursting with personality. It's a D. Match 13, wow, Monday Night Raw. There's no crowd, but I'll take it. It's Bianca Belair versus Santana Garrett again. Belair drops her to the map, she's just playing with her. Santana slips out of a slam and punches her, which causes Belair to smile and shove her down. Bianca does a waist lock takedown, not once, not twice, but thrice, and it sure wasn't nice. Belair hurls her across the ring for Big Beal. Santana does manage to float over in the corner, but her arm drag is botched. Belair's just running circles around her, it's almost embarrassing. Big delayed suplex from Belair now. She keeps going for a splash to the back. Then, randomly, Santana manages a top rope crossbody for a one count. She hits the weakest kick of all time and tries to do a handspring which is broken up mid-move. Bianca picks her up and drops her on the turnbuckle and once again she beats her the same way as last time with the KOD. This is just getting worse and worse, maybe it's a confidence issue. She's moving like a woman that isn't comfortable. It's an S, back to NXT she goes. Oh, Match 14, Mia Yim versus Santana Garrett. Well this time at least Garrett can manage her float over in the corner into an arm drag. Her handspring back elbow looks the best so far too. Her snap suplex only gets her a two count. Mia Yim kicks out of authority. But all of that is meaningless because Yim hits a dragon suplex in the protect your neck to beat her in a minute. It's an S. Oh, she's never going to win, is she? It's a waste of time, completely idiotic to keep going. But as established, I am an idiot. Stop it, man. She's lacking in character or anything remotely interesting. Hell, even a 20 second match with some random Maltese would be more interesting and characterful. <laughs> Well, that was weird. Match 15, Aaliyah. Man, I'm surprised this woman didn't become a star. What a look she had. She's got them cokey eyes like Chelsea Green. Santana Garrett's act is feeling so tired. What happened to her circus attire? She was really going places with that. So here comes yet another loss. This might actually be a first ever on Ring of the Hawk. All losses. Aaliyah hits the spinning net breaker straight away and rains down on her with punches. 
Robbie E appears at ringside. Just thought I'd tell you, he doesn't do anything. Aaliyah launches her across the ring and hits a running kick in the corner for a two. Garrett escapes a submission but eats a huge slap. Huge mistake, that fires her up. Garrett slaps her back on the top rope and then goes all Trish Stratus again. Wow, and watch this incredibly rare footage right now. Keep your eyelids peeled. Garrett hits the handspring moonsault and she actually wins the match. Wow, I'm in shock. She actually won in a one minute match. It's a D for her first win. It only took 15 matches. It really leaves you questioning life. What is the point in anything? It's a D. Match 16, Santana Garrett. Oh, she's rejoined the circus. Good for her. She takes on Mercedes Martinez, two experienced indie wrestlers right here. She's back to looking like a joke straight away. She hits the handspring back elbow, which Martinez no-sells and boots her down. Garrett keeps trying does the forward roll into a punch, which once again, Martinez is barely hurt from it. Then Martinez just wins with a fisherman's buster in two minutes. Not Kiss the kind me, of match bitch. you'd ever want to see again. It's an S. Match 17, final match, Raw Rumble 2021. Santana randomly enters this match at number 12. She's just going to be a body in this women's Royal Rumble match. She does manage her handspring back elbow to Ruby Riot, which is a decent highlight for her. She can't eliminate Ruby though. Liv Morgan enters and kicks Santana before she's even made it into the ring. Well, it won't surprise you to know that she only lasts a few minutes in this match, but I have to say I dig how she's eliminated. It's actually quite cool. Ripley clotheslines her onto the apron, knees her in the head, sweeps her legs out, causing Garrett to do the splits. One more kick to the head and she's done. It's a D because I actually liked what they did here. I know it's not much, but you don't have much to work with in such a miserable run of matches. Game over. So basically this whole run sucked and it really made me question why I liked her so much in the first place. I think it was probably just because I found her attractive. But that's the thing. Hindsight is a wonderful thing, like a punch to the gut. She just didn't expand her move repertoire. Belair was already using her main move, but better. She didn't connect with anyone. She didn't have any feuds or storylines. She won one match and she was starting to age. I'll tell you what's mad though, if she'd come about 10 years sooner, she would have been huge. Because the stuff she could do in the ring was better than most of the Divas era and she had the looks to fit in. 2018, almost every woman she faced was more exciting. So this is an example of not taking an opportunity and not moving with the times. So we're going to shove her in the zone because this run was worthless because when it comes to requirements, she was surplus. She did the J.O.B. and that was her only purpose. 